Thank you for joining me. I'm Juan, lead trader and founder of Prosperity Trade. In this video, we're taking a look at Foot Locker. I want to take a look at Foot Locker and decide if it's undervalued or overvalued. Fundamentally, is it a good play? Should we invest in it now or wait later? You're going to want to watch this video. Before we start talking about Facebook, let's take a look at our portfolio. Let's talk about the stocks that we've already called out, that we suggested, that we've already invested in, and see how they're doing. So the first one on the list is Intel. Intel recently had some earnings come out. They did decent in their earnings, but I think because they predicted that they were going to have less revenue in the next few years, next cash in the next few years, that it kind of scared away analysts. And on top of that, AMD is extremely strong and taking a lot of the market share. I'm still holding my position in Intel. I think that they do have some things coming down the line and they have enough cash to reinvest them in themselves and become more competitive with AMD. So Intel is still a hold. Best Buy has done great since our call. It's been up 14%. And it's about $8 away from my DCF valuation. If you look on the right, on the we have here the DCF valuation. It's, it's about $8 away from that. Uh, Valley took a dive a little bit, took a dump. But Valley dropped a little bit. But it's still up 0.7% since the time I made the video. And my target value is still $22. This company is great for dividend. So I'm still holding. I recently received dividend a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, and it was extremely generous. Uh, it was uh, it came out to about a dollar seventy, a dollar eighty something, I think, per share. So it was a nice dividend, and and it would make up for any loss of the any drop in price. Facebook took a big drop. We were I was up on Facebook a lot more, and it recently dropped. In the after hours, it went back up with their revenue, with their quarterly report. So that's still a hold. I'm still holding long-term. Uh, I feel like it does have a DCF valuation of 417. And the only thing that would change if they're the whistleblowers and, and some of the accusations, if that continues to affect the price, I may have to relook at it. Alibaba was a great play, got in at 139, up 26%. Uh, DCF valuation is 229. 10 cent, 57, it's at 65, it's up 12%. DCF valuation, 66. And Lazy Boy, $32.67 was the initial price, it's at 34. So it's up over 5%, and my valuation is $40. But um, I'm going to keep a close eye on it. If it gets to 37, I may just close it out. A quick look at growth stocks. So the growth stocks are up quite a bit. Sensionics, I'm going to have a video on that soon. And I'm just waiting for their 365-day approval. They should be getting it soon. If that happens, it's going to send this stock spiking even more, but we're still up 20%. MP is a great indirect EV play, up 8%. Close to the target value, about $8 off the target value. Palantir is still good. Gold is a hedge play. SMTI is about $13 away from DCF valuation. DNMR is down 35%. AMD was a leap option. SMLR, my favorite play, is up 26%, as high as 144 and just about $8 away from DCF valuation. This has been my favorite growth company I've had so far. So let's take a look at Foot Locker. There's a lot of smart money invested in Foot Locker. We have Vanguard, Fidelity, Boston, Dimension. And there's a lot of mutual funds that hold Foot Locker. And I believe that's because over the years, these companies had steady revenue growth. They've been able to control their liabilities. They've been able to control the cost of revenue. And they've just been a steady, strong company domestically here in the United States where they've received the majority of their revenue. But internationally also, they've received about two close to $2 billion in international revenue. So they're just a strong company, a strong presence. And that's the reason for my DCF here today. I want to see if it's a good investment right now. So if we take a look at the revenue, 
it's been steady growth. And if I'm going to invest in a value play, I like to see strong, steady growth. I don't like to see major jumps. It kind of scares me away. And it's more of those growth stop plays where you kind of have to keep a better eye on it. You have, you have to check to see if it's worth paying for that extra growth, if it's value. And there are a lot of companies that are expensive, but they have so much growth that it's, it's possibly worth it. So I like to have a mixture of those types of companies, but also the value companies that are just strong, steady, reliable. You can put your money in for the next 10 years and not worry about losing any money or not worry as much, obviously. But they've had a quite a good history of beating S&P as far as uh, returns. Over the last five years, they've outperformed the S&P. Revenue growth from $5.6 billion to $7 billion in 15, 7.4, 7.7, 7.7, 7.9, 8.0. So just steady revenue growth. Now their cost of revenue has also increased and increased quite a bit in 2018, 2019, 2020. And it's understood as revenue increases, so will cost of revenue. But the only concern is percentage wise, if you see here, they've had a healthy 58%, 57%, 57% cost of revenue, 59%. And then for some reason in 2019, 2020, 2021, those increases almost reach 70% for cost of revenue. So that would take a little bit more due diligence. That's around COVID time. I don't know if COVID would have anything to do with it. Possibly materials getting expensive because of shipping and things like that may have attributed to this. So this is something that would definitely warrant a little bit more due diligence. So a Warren Buffett type stock, he likes to see steady cost of revenue. He likes to see stability, just predictable patterns. He doesn't like to see major jumps and major drops. So it's something that would des that deserves more due diligence. We look at their selling general admin expenses. It's been steady. It's actually been decreasing. So their operating income has also been decreasing and it's obviously due to the cost of revenue increasing. Uh, one great thing about this company, they are buying back shares. So we have here in 2012, they had 154 million, 2015, 146, February, 2019, 116, and February, 2020, 109, 105. So they've consistently bought back a lot of their share. In, my, in some of my other videos, I talk about free cash flow and how important free cash flow is because with free cash flow, you can pay down debt, you can buy back shares, you can pay dividends, you can reinvest, you can make acquisitions. So they've used their free cash flow to buy back shares. And what that means for you as the investor, as you hold whatever amount of shares that you have, your percentage of ownership in that company is going to increase because there's less shares circulating and that's going to help your bottom line. That's going to help um, your returns at the end. So they do have dividend. Uh, last year in 2020, they paid $1.52. So that's excellent. So that's good to see. And they have enough free cash flow to pay their dividend. But we'll look at that in a minute. And we recently did a video on balance sheet. If you're interested in that, you can click the link above. So their balance sheet, their cash and equivalent, Steady under 900 mil, under 900 mil. And they had a little spike between 2015 and 2017. Then just back to their average under 900 mil in cash and equivalents. Total assets, 7 billion. And total liabilities, 4 billion. You see here their employees went from 26,000, 32,000, 32,175, 32,400, 33,294, 33,522. So that's something you like to see especially in the retail business where it's so competitive. They're in a sector with their sneakers and their gear where it's extremely expensive, where the own, where companies like Nike and Adidas are also getting in the e-commerce sales. So there's less opportunity for storefront companies. You know, it's extremely competitive. So it's good to see that their revenue growth has kept increasing, that they have control of their debt. They're buying back shares, hiring more employees. There's all, all good signs for a retail company. Okay, so if we go to Yahoo Finance, we can see their cash flow. We'll go back to 2015, they had 522 million of cash flow, 517, 550, 
539, 594, 509, then a big jump here, 903, 2021. Their cash flow has been steady. It hasn't been decreasing drastically and it hasn't been increasing. So it's something I like to see. They did have a little bit of drop here from 594 million to 509, and that can possibly be due to COVID. But I just like that they've had steady cash flow over the last few years, and they've been using that cash flow to buy back shares. And hopefully they'll, they'll keep that positive amount of cash flow. They had a big jump in 2021, again, possibly due to COVID reopening. A lot of people want to get out and go shopping. And if we see here over the last few quarters, they've blew out a lot of the estimates for earnings by quite a bit. So I expect the next earnings, November 18th, that they're going to continue to, to beat the estimated earnings. And their estimated earnings are $1.34. I expect them to beat earnings again. Okay, so looking at their trends for store closures, I went back to 2016 and they've closed 33 stores and opened 10. If we go to 2017, they closed 42 stores and opened four in the U.S. In 2018, they closed 26 stores and opened two stores. In 2019, in the U.S., they closed 29 stores and opened 10 stores. In 2020, they closed 40 stores and opened up 21 stores. 2020, they had 867 stores. 2019, 886. 2018, 910, 948, and 2017, 971, and 16. That is a trend that kind of concerns me, but I don't know if we can... Um, I would have to take a closer look and kind of compare those store closures because they, they haven't had a major drop in revenue. So maybe that's why their cost of sales changed. Their e-commerce net sales spiked up in 2020 quite a, quite a bit. So maybe this is making up for some of those store closures. Okay, so for my DCF evaluation, I had here their base case growth rate close to about a 2% average growth rate. And discount rate is a little bit up, and that'll hopefully make up for any inflation. And we go off of their 2021 cash flow, which was 903 million. And we're just expecting steady growth over the next few years of 2%. Um, if we go off the path of their past, this wouldn't be as accurate. Their base case scenario, if I'm not too confident on the base case, definitely not going to be confident on the best case. Best case scenario is that they continue to grow the way they've grown the last years, which, which I don't think so. I think that they're gonna, they had their spike this year, a free cash flow spike, $900 million. I think it was because of reopening. I think we'll have a bigger drop next year and the year after that, and then they'll get back to their average free cash flow. So this 6870, which is the worst case scenario, but I think the more realistic, the reason it's the worst, worst case scenario because we're expecting them to go from 900 million and, and have just a major drop. You know, if it drops back down to 700 million, 600 million, that's an over a 20 some plus percent drop in free cash flow. But just like we looked at their free cash flow in their past, they were averaging between 500 and just just about 600 million as their average every year with the exception of the reopening of COVID. So I think it's going to get back to the average and I would say their free cash flow value would be about $68. So I did a, another DCF that I have on another sheet of paper and where I, where I took into account revenue growth. And it was just a more detailed tier two DCF that I've shown in the past. And I've averaged out both prices to give me about $58 of DCF value for this stock. This stock is currently trading at $48. So is it a buy? It's not a buy for me just now, but I would like to see what the market does in a few months. There's some concerns that inflation is going to increase over the next few months, possibly after January. 
They're saying here about 53% of experts think that the market will fall 10% sometime in the next year, but maybe not around, not right away. Around 33% believe that a correction is overdue and could happen any time over the next six months. But they've been saying this for quite a bit. I do like the company. I do think that as far as their return in investments, they're just under uh, retail average and return on equity. I like this company. I think it's if you buy it now, if you feel comfortable buying it, then just don't worry about the market, the overall market. If it's going to drop or go up, just be comfortable and hold it for the next few years. Again, like it seems like they're a good value. Even when I look at their enterprise value to sales, theirs is 0.81. Their retail average is at about 0.93. So overall, it's, it's a good company. It's a strong company. They've had strong revenue growth. They've been able to survive during COVID. They've been able to survive during Amazon, during the e-commerce phase. I still think that people are always going to want to get sneakers at the store. This company has been surviving. You see, they seem to be undervalued. They seem to have still a lot of potential for growth. If you invest in it now, I wouldn't blame you. I would just say because of all the fear, you know, if you increase inflation just by a little bit, it's going to affect the DCF value of companies. It's going to affect companies that aren't expected to be profitable for the next 10, 15 years. They have those long DCFs. Those companies will get hit the hardest. I think Foot Locker and these companies, because they've been so established, they're not going to get hit as hard. They'll, they'll be a little bit safer. I would feel more comfortable waiting till after December, January, see what happens with the macro of the market. And if it's still at a good value, then I'm definitely going to put it in my portfolio. For me right now, I'm going to, it's a hold, wait, and see. It's a great company. If you do invest in it, I couldn't blame you, but I'm going to wait just a few more months, reevaluate it, and check to see where the price is in the next few months or if anything's changed fundamentally. Okay. Thank you for joining me. That was my video. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like, and see you on the next video.